This is my version of the classic electrostatic motor. The construction is simple. We have this plastic sphere. It has a hole so we can put it here and it's, it rotates freely. The sphere has three strips of aluminum sheet and we have these two terminals also is aluminum they connect to these pieces of wire here we will put positive and negative of a high voltage power supply around 8 kilovolts the terminals rest on these pieces of acrylic we are using this to avoid electricity flowing from one terminal to the other. You may think that electricity cannot flow through the base that is made of wood. However, at these levels of voltage, wood is no longer a good insulator. Additionally, we have this piece of wire here. When the ball is on its place, the terminal does not touch the ball. There is a little gap of around 2 or 3 millimeters. And that is all the parts of the electrostatic motor. Let's see it in action. I have connected the motor terminals to the high voltage power supply. If you want to learn how to make this power supply, you can follow the link that appears now on the screen and is also on the video description. I am going to apply power now. In theory, the speed of the motor increases continually. In practice, however, it is limited by the friction with the rotor axis and with the surrounding air. Let me explain how the motor works. This is the high voltage positive terminal and this terminal induces also a positive charge on this aluminum strip. Like chargers repel and this strip will move away from this aluminum sheet. Also the negative plate here will attract the positive aluminum strip and the effect is that the motor tries to move in this way. Also, this terminal here charges even more the aluminum strip and the effect is magnified. However, even without this terminal the motor will still run so it will be at a lower speed as we will see now. I will put more voltage on the motor, 15,000 volts. It is not the optimum voltage, however, the effect is visually attractive. 